In a cafe in Suva, Frank Chandler and the Regents meet Steve Wilson, a trader, and agree to engage Wilson's sailing boat for a trip to a neighboring island the following day. As they discuss their plans, Wilson grows alarmed at a song sung by the native entertainers and tells Chandler he knows there will be trouble. For the song they sing is one always heard before secret tribal rites, which it is better that white men do not see. The present act opens on the boat the following afternoon. Chandu, the magician. Hasn't this been a perfect day, Mother? Yes, it has, dear. I've never seen such a beautiful day in my whole life. It seems to me it's just like the world was brand new. Oh, yeah. I suppose you think that island ahead of us is just rising from the sea or something. Don't tease her, Bobby. Oh, I don't care, Mother. I don't mind what he says today. Well, you aren't sick or anything, are you? Oh, don't be silly. Don't you think it's wonderful, Nadine? Indeed, I do, Betty Lou. I wonder how much longer it'll take us to get to the island. Seems to be you, Bob. Oh, I think we are. I'll go ask Uncle Frank if you want me to. Oh, never mind. He's talking to Mr. Wilson anyway. Yeah, I know. What are they talking about all this time? Why, Bob? Mm, nothing. I just kind of wondered. <laughs> I'm getting so I think every time I see anybody talking to anybody else, they're getting up a plot of some kind. I know you are, son. I'm glad there's no one on this island who ever going. They certainly have no grounds for suspicion over here. When Uncle Frank comes back here, I want to ask him more about that man. Because I don't see how he could have done it anyway. Done what? Dressed up like Fingy. Oh, don't they? Let's not talk about that now. Poor Nudge. Poor you must not feel that you are not free to discuss what you will. I do not mind to speak of it. Oh, here's Uncle Frank. Let's do ask him about it. Ask me about what, Bob? Uncle Frank, we were talking about how that fellow could dress in Dean Young's clothes and make everybody think he was Dean Young. You talked to the captain of the liner about him, didn't you? Yes. He told me that when they were transferring the crew from the yacht to the liner, this fellow had suddenly appeared in the water beside the boat. The little boat that the crew was in, Uncle Frank? Yes. The captain thought he'd fallen out of it in some way. He presumed, of course, he was a member of the crew. Frank, why didn't some of the others think of it to him? You mean the others in the crew? Yes. I should think they'd have told the captain the man was an imposter. I know it does seem strange, Dorothy. I'll say it seems strange. My Uncle Frank, you don't suppose all those fellows in Andres' crew are ganging up on him to kill him? Of course not. It was never intended for Andres to die. Oh, that's right. They were after Najee, weren't they? Bobby, please. It is over, Dorothy, so what should we not speak of it? Yes, son. But it is strange that the crew would shield this man who was posing as vengeance. I think Dr. Willoughby hated me, Chandu. Why, Najee? Yes, it is true. And I think you have learned of it before now. Did he not say to you that if Andra's father had known, I would not have been permitted to sail on the Palana? Why... Yes, he did, Nazi, but... Do not think to spare me, Chandu. There is more in this than you know. Well, at any rate, it's definitely over. Dr. Willoughby will go back to India with the Polana as soon as the captain gets repaired, me. Are they going to wait for that before they go home? Yes, sir. They want to take the yacht back to Andrew's father. Well, go on, Uncle Frank. Tell us what the captain said about that man. Oh. He said they'd pulled the man into the boat. And when they boarded the liner, he was taken to the crew's quarters where he was given an opportunity to dry his clothes. Yeah. The captain thought nothing more about it, because, of course, they were occupied with the business of bringing horses to tow the yacht. And then they had to change our belongings from the yacht to the liner. Well, how did he get up there to the party? I think that's kind of funny, don't you? Of course, by the time I talked to him, the captain realized what had happened. The fellow had taken advantage of the fact that there was a costume party on deck and had simply gone up there and lost himself in the crowd. We'll probably never know just what it was that happened aboard the Milana. Oh, gee, don't you hate to give up without finding out, Uncle Frank? Of course I do. But you did convince the police in Suva that Najee had nothing to do with poisoning Andra, Frank. Yes, indeed. Or they'd have had her arrested. I was afraid you might have trouble with them when I knew the captain and Dr. Willoughby were both so firmly convinced Najee was guilty. I thought at first I might not. Of course, the thing that made me so sure this man who was impersonating Vinyan was guilty, I couldn't tell the police. Well, what was it, Uncle Frank? I looked at his hands, Bob. His hands? Oh, you mean the scene in the crystal, Frank? Yes. But don't you remember, Frank, when we saw that room in the crystal, the hand that came in and set the cigarette box on the table was white. Don't you remember? It was a smooth white hand that might almost have been a woman. Yes, but don't forget this man was only made up to look like an East Indian. My Uncle Frank. Oh, you knew that, Betty. I did not. 
I knew he was pretending to be old when he was young, but I thought he really was from India. Who was he, Uncle Frank? I wish I knew, Betty. Then you think he might have been English or even American? I would think that, except for the fact that I know any menace of Naji must come from the East. But why it should come, we do not know, Chandu. You don't really know, Naji? But no, Chandu. Well, then what have you been so scared about all this time, Naji? Bobby, never mind, sir. No. And besides, we mustn't speak of this with Paul Wilson. Well, Mrs. Reagan, we'll be landing soon. Have you folks been enjoying yourselves? Yes, indeed, Mr. Wilson. Oh, it's just been wonderful. I'm almost sorry we're nearly there. Yeah, but I want to see how they get through the coral reef. Must take some pretty slick steering, huh, Mr. Wilson? <laughs> These blacks are very smart sailors. They can see a channel where a white man would be lost. Well, isn't the island beautiful? Isn't it funny nobody lives on it? I should think such a beautiful island would be full of people, wouldn't you, Mother? Yes. And it's so short a sail from Suva, I'm surprised someone doesn't build a hotel for tourists. Uh, one island is almost like another down here, Mrs. Regan. Today's sail from Suva is too far for most tourists. And then besides... They'd have a hard time getting the blacks to work here. Why? I mean, they they couldn't keep servants, you see. Some tribal legend connected with the island? Oh, yes, in a way. There's never been anybody living on this island since I've been in this part of the world. But there's a story down here that the place used to be populated. What happened to the people? Nobody knows. Jeez. Of course, it, it may be just one of these yarns they're always spinning. These people are just like children, you know. They have no idea of time. It may be 50 years or 100 since anybody lived on the island. Instead of 25 or 30, like they say. You mean that as recently as 25 or 30 years ago, this island was inhabited? Well, that's the native story. But I, I don't take much stock in it myself. Well, why is it the natives are afraid to come over here? You see, the story is that the natives who lived here... We're not quite like the people that lived on the other islands around here. You mean they were of a different race? Well, that's the only thing I can make out of it. The English people that live here, well, that is a few of them I see, they don't pay no attention to the yarn at all. What race were they supposed to be, Mr. Wilson? Oh, I don't know why I should be telling you all this rubbish. I, I don't believe it myself. Oh, please go on. I'd love to hear about it. Well, they were supposed to be descendants of some people who crossed to the island centuries ago. Where were they supposed to have come from? That's part of the story. No one knows where they were supposed to have lived before they came here, or why they came, or, or what kind of boats they had that they could cross the Pacific. You mean they actually came from Australia, or... I don't know why I think so, but I've always kind of imagined that these people came from Java. You really do believe it, don't you? Oh, no. No, of course I don't. Well, you sound like it. Bobby. Frank, do you think there could be anything in that? Do you think people could really cross the ocean from Java in small boats? It doesn't seem likely, does it? Mr. Wilson, does the legend say what these people looked like? Well, they were supposed to be light-colored. And sometimes you even hear that they had blue eyes. If I'd only been a few years earlier coming down here, I might have seen some of them myself. Wouldn't that have been thrilling? I don't know about that. <laughs> I am kind of interested in them. You've been over here a lot of times? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been over here maybe maybe 25 times. And you've never seen anyone living here? No, not a soul. A little ways inland, there's a lot of shrubs and yams and things like that that look as if somebody lived here once and grew stuff to eat. But it's all overrun with jungle now. Boy, isn't this keen? Don't you think so, Uncle Frank? Yes. I think it's very interesting. Well, I'll have to leave you for a minute. We're going through the reef into the lagoon. Hey, steady there. How skillful they are. Yes, we'll be through in a second. Oh, and isn't this water beautiful? What a place for a swim, huh, Uncle Frank? You suppose there are any sharks down here? We'll ask Wilson if you like. You'll have to go ashore in a small boat, you know, Mr. Chandler. Very well. Oh, I can hardly wait. Isn't the island beautiful with those tall green trees against the sky? It looks just like a picture of the South Sea Island garden. Uh, here you are, Mrs. Breedham. Take my hand. I can manage, thank you. The water's so quiet, there's almost no motion. Yeah, that's one good thing about these coral islands. Are you ready, Princess? Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Ready, Betty? Of course. There. Come on, Bob. Come on, Uncle Frank. All right, Mr. Wilson. I'm glad it's only a little worse. 
Pete's sake, sit still. Oh, I'm so excited. I feel as if we were the first people ever to come here. Don't you, Bob? Yeah, Robinson Crusoe's or something, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is the most beautiful place I ever saw. There. Come on, Betty. I'll help you out. Okay, we go for a run up the beach, Uncle Frank? Yes, of course. Don't go out of sight, children. We won't. Come on, you can be Robinson Crusoe, and I'll be your man Fry. <laughs> okay. Hey. What's the matter? What's the matter, Bob? Uncle Frank, come here. Come here, quick. What is it, Bob? Look there. I thought he said nobody had been on this island for 50 years or something. Look at that. Why, yes, it's a footprint. It is just like Robinson Crusoe. What's the matter, Frank? I'll tell you in a moment, Doc. And you see, Bob, this isn't the print of a barefooted man. No. It's funny looking, isn't it? Yes. It's the print of a sandaled foot. 